Welcome back to the Scout Sew Along. In today's lesson, I'll discuss the specifics involved in cutting your scout. If you missed our previous lesson on pattern adjustments, you can find that in our YouTube profile under the Scout Sew Along series. I hope you all have your patterns ready because it's time to grab those scissors and get cutting. Before we get started with our fabric, let's talk briefly about how woven fabric is made. As you can see in this image, woven fabric is constructed by weaving horizontal weft yarns over and under a series of vertical warp fibers. This action is done on a loom. The horizontal weft yarns run along what we call the cross grain and the vertical warp yarns form the straight grain. At either edge running along the length of the fabric is the selv edge. This is a tightly woven edge finish created during manufacturing and this is what you'll align your pattern's grain line with. Now we'll discuss pre-treating and prepping your fabric. You'll want to pre-wash and dry your fabric prior to cutting to reduce or eliminate shrinkage in your final garment. Make sure you wash your yardage using the same method and settings that you're planning to use to wash your finished garment. So say you wanna wash your finished scout on cold, you'll wash your yardage on cold. If you're going to wash your finished scout on warm, wash the fabric on warm. Same thing goes for drying. The last thing you want is your garment shrinking after you've finished it and you spent so much time getting the fit right. So make sure you take the time to pre-wash and dry your fabric. Once out of the dryer, you'll want to give your fabric a good press. Cutting is always easier on a nice flat fabric, so don't skimp on this step. If you're working with a particularly wrinkly fabric, like linen, taking the fabric out of the dryer just before it's completely bone dry and pressing it then can help get the wrinkles out better. The next step in cutting your pieces is laying out the fabric. Laying out your fabric is pretty straightforward. First off, you're going to need to determine the right and wrong side of your fabric. If you're using a printed fabric, this is easy. The printed side is the right side. So here you can see we have the print on top and underneath it's washed out because it was screen printed on top of the fabric. And the same for this other one. We have the darker print on the top and underneath there's no screen printing. Here we have a woven uh, jacquard fabric. You can see the front has this nice pattern and the back has all the floats where the threads used to make the pattern are carried behind. So that's an easy one. You can tell the front and the back apart quite easily. Some fabrics look the same on the front and the back. This can be true for solid fabrics or fabrics like this yarn dyed gingham fabric. Um, so in a case like this, if you can't tell the right or wrong side, all you have to do is choose the side that you like best. When doing this, make sure that you mark one side of all your pattern pieces as either the right or wrong side to avoid confusion during the sewing process. So for example, you can place a chalk mark, a safety pin, just something to remember what the front and the back is so that you're sewing consistently. You'll now lay your fabric out with the cell edges together. So here I have the two cell edges. We're going to align that edge along the length of the fabric. A lot of people have you fold the right sides of the fabric together, but I prefer to fold mine with the right sides facing out. If you're working with a striper print, I find it much easier to choose which parts of the print I want where when the right side is facing out. Often it's harder to see the print of the fabric due to the techniques used to create it. This means you may potentially struggle more with print and pattern matching. So you can see here, just aligning my cell edges. I kind of tug on them a little bit, get them nice and straight. And I also have a technique that I learned while working in bridal where you just kind of run your nails along the fabric. That way you can smooth out the layers without really shifting the entire fabric. One thing you're going to want to pay attention to also is that the folded edge isn't torquing. So 
If your selve edges aren't aligned evenly, the fabric here will torque. So you need to make sure that it's smooth at the fold, laying nice and flat with no torquing, as well as smooth at the selve edges. Now that our fabric is properly laid out, it's time to place our pattern pieces. To lay out your fabric, start by locating the cutting diagrams in your instruction booklet. Each of our patterns has a complete set of cutting diagrams, which we've designed to give you the best fabric yield. Select the layout that matches your fabric width, pattern size, and which version of the pattern you're cutting. One thing to keep in mind with these layouts is that we have not laid them out for directional fabric. Directional fabric is a fabric with a clear top and bottom to the print or design, such as flowers with a stem, people, etc. When cutting directional fabric, you'll want to make sure that the tops of each pattern piece align with the top of the print. So if this was a directional fabric and the top of the print was here, here we have the top of the shirt, so the print would be facing in the right direction, but here the top of the print would be towards the hem, so we would simply flip our pattern piece over, and you may need to rearrange slightly. So the top of the print is now falling towards the shoulder, and then our sleeve, again, you want the top of the print towards the cap and the bottom of the print towards the hem. I weight my pattern pieces with professional cloth weights, but you can use anything. Cloth weights, also known as pattern weights, are made from cast iron and weigh about four pounds each. They're made to weight a pattern to cloth while tracing and cutting and are low profile so you can easily maneuver around them. You can find these at any pattern making supply store. Small cloth weights for home sewing are available at most sewing supply stores or you can use washers, cans of food, anything heavy and relatively low profile works great. Another option for keeping your patterns in place is pinning it to the fabric. I personally avoid this method as if you're working with a non-tissue pattern like we are here, it can create a jag in the cutting line in the area where the pins are. I also find it can be hard to cut around the curved edges while the thick paper is pinned to the fabric. So I just get a cleaner cut if I trace and then cut. To trace my patterns, I either use a marking tool with a chalk wheel, a fine point mechanical chalk pencil, or a plain old number two pencil. When cutting, you wanna cut off the lines you've marked so you can use anything that doesn't bleed with no trouble. So you're just gonna start tracing. And as you trace, make sure you mark your notches. Here you can see my chalk line. So continue tracing until all of your pattern pieces are traced off. Now that your pattern pieces are traced, you can remove the pattern. I like to just replace the weight and then cut, but you can also put pins around the perimeter of the garment if you prefer. I'm just going to make sure my notch is marked into the fabric, and then I'm going to cut. You can use either a scissor or a rotary cutter, whatever you feel most comfortable with. I'll be using scissors because that's what I like and find comfortable, but there's no wrong way to cut. So, just cut around. As you cut around the armhole, make sure you go back in and clip your notch. And 
And the same for the sleeve cap. You want to make sure you clip your notches so you can find those later. They'll be very important. And our first piece is cut. Now keep in mind, on the Scout 0-18, to 18, there are no points to mark inside your pattern. But on the 14-30, to 30, you'll need to mark the bust points. There are a few ways you can mark these. The first is with a pin. This is easy and it leaves no mark when removed, but it can fall out as you work. You can also just place a small chalk point um, that will wipe right off when you're done, and it's easy to find while you sew. So just continue to work and cut out all your pattern pieces as instructed. And that is it for today's lesson and for the prep work. In our next lesson, we'll be assembling the body of the Scout. So get your machine out, threaded, and ready to sew. I'll see you back here for that next time. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, as always, let us know in the comments below. And make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our video updates. I'll see you back here next time. Bye.